Japan is a land of stunning contrast. Here you'll discover modern, bustling cities, There's the other side of Japan that's serene and tranquil and steeped in a rich culture and history. In the southwestern part of Japan, you'll find Hiroshima. Of course, it's best known as the first city that was attacked by the atomic bomb. It's hard to imagine that this now bustling city was once this. And, in the blink of an eye, turned to this. The city now stands as a testament to the horrific and devastating power of the atomic weapon and remains a memorial that promotes peace to the world. The Hiroshima area is also the birthplace of many of the Japanese who came to the United States in the early 20th century. For most who came to the United States during that era, their journey began here and their history in America would be one of hard work, challenges and struggles that spanned generations. The first generation of Japanese who came to America, called Issei, came of age during a period of stunning growth in Japan known as the Meiji Restoration. This was an era when Japan was modernizing with its ability to manufacture goods and build its military might. The country was in a deep recession and my ancestors, along with a large population in the region, found themselves with little to no opportunities in Japan. Meanwhile, in the United States, with passage of the Chinese Exclusion Act in 1882, Chinese could no longer immigrate to the U.S. to fill the need for cheap labor. As a result, thousands of Japanese were recruited to work in the States. The wave of Japanese immigrants came to this country to make money to improve their lives and finances and ultimately return to Japan. They took on the manual labor that the majority didn't want to do. My family, Issei, came to America in the early 1900s and settled in Northern California in what is now San Jose and Mountain View. Many of the Japanese immigrants moved into agriculture, a natural progression from the standpoint of expertise, and on the West Coast, they proved to be successful farmers, somehow making subpar land productive and fruitful. In the 1930s, during the Depression, my family Issei provided manual labor on farms in California's Central Valley and scratched out a meager living. On my mom's side, the family eventually saved enough to purchase farmland of their own.
everything changed. Racism and hatred, which had always been present, escalated to the highest levels. The Japanese were considered at risk to assist Japan in the war through potential spying and sabotage. Shortly after Japan's attack, President Franklin D. Roosevelt signed Executive Order 9066, which allowed the Secretary of War to designate military areas from which any or all persons may be excluded. This authority would eventually be used to remove all people of Japanese ancestry, some 120,000 people from the nation's west coast to remote inland locations. By early 1942, Japanese Americans were told by the government that they would have to leave their homes and businesses to be housed elsewhere. Where they would be relocated was unknown to them. Many families were given six days to dispose of almost all their possessions and could only pack that which can be carried by the family or the individual. This included clothing, bedding, toilet articles, and eating utensils. Evacuation sales were common, with families desperately trying to sell their possessions. Families had to close businesses, shops, and farms. In the case of my mother's family, they literally lost the farm, leaving crops in the field that were ready to be harvested and sold to market. barrack consisted of four 20 by 25 foot rooms and eight people were assigned to each. If families did not meet the required number for a room, they were housed with strangers. The rooms featured no partitions or ceilings and no privacy. All facilities were communal, which included mess halls, showers, and toilets. The toilet and shower facilities were open and offered no privacy. In the 
mess halls, families sat at communal tables in shifts to eat. With labor in short supply during the war, internees were allowed to leave if they could find and procure jobs. After two years in the camps, several members of my mom's family moved to Chicago. We lived all with Auntie Janet. They had an upstairs apartment, third floor, south side Chicago, near the uh, slaughterhouse. But I had to go far because I was working in a factory then. Colonel's uh, marshmallows kind of run up to the train because it was elevated and get on and it'd take me about 45 minutes, I guess, at least. Uh, cool. Worked in the baby room. Packed the penny uh, candy into those little wrappers. And then I went to uh, where they made a uh, pinball machine. I spent one full winter there, and it was so cold. My father's side of the family was interned at Heart Mountain, Wyoming. Members in his family left camp and made their way to Seabrook, New Jersey to work in the factories and fields to grow and process vegetables. After the camps closed, my families moved back to California's Central Valley where the brothers and sisters worked as day laborers, picking crops, mainly strawberries. Our Issei grandmother, already in her 60s, picked strawberries alongside her adult children to help make ends meet and gain a new start during extremely difficult times. Well, she worked after camp, sure. She picked grapes and so on. Sure, even I did one summer when uh, I was home. Boy, that's a tough life, you know, farm picking then. Some remained in the Central Valley for the rest of their lives, while some moved to Los Angeles for opportunities away from farming. After the war, many companies in Southern California wouldn't hire Japanese Americans. As a result, a good number of the Nisei men in Los Angeles became gardeners who owned their own businesses to maintain the homes in high-end neighborhoods. This was the case on both sides of my family. We looked for apartments in those days it was hard. It was seeing an ad in the paper and it go there. Oh, yeah, sure, come. The minute they see us, they say, I'm sorry, he's not in or he's, it's rented. On a recent trip to Japan, I visited Hiroshima and the nearby Etajima Island from where my families originated. To get to the island, you take a ferry boat from Hiroshima. The island was far larger than I imagined and more mountainous. Today it's still quite rural, but there was apparently far more open land when my ancestors lived here in the late 19th century. I visited Kirikushi, the shoreline and port village where my father's family is from. I saw their house, and in the front of the house was the stump of an old apricot tree that existed in their time. I also visited the nearby Shinto shrine that my family would have certainly known. My mother's family was from Yamada village, which is near the former Imperial Japanese Naval Academy. During my visit, we could not locate Yamada village on a map. It appears to no longer exist as a distinct town, although we did find markers in a small commercial district that appeared to be in the approximate right location. On this little island of Etajima, there is indeed a world of family history.
My Say ancestors planned to only stay a short time in the United States to make money and then eventually return to Japan. But their decision to come to America impacted the lives of generations to follow in stunning ways that they simply could not have imagined. America is our home country, and it all started here in a tiny corner.